So Ed, I yeah. have his. I have his. Um, so people are going to start hearing you, just so you know. Okay. I have all the paperwork from the Colorado tour, and I have all the paperwork from the Alps tour. <laughs> oh, very good. And my wife is coming to sit with me. Uh, so folks, welcome. I'm letting everybody in. It takes a little bit of time on Zoom, so I'm just going to ask you for your patience for a moment, and we'll begin momentarily. Well, their order's still coming in, Ed, and it's after seven. <laughs> oh, here we go. Ken's joining. Just letting people in. Yeah, we're up to 42. Just letting people in. We have over 90 people who registered. So we're about halfway through. We're going to give it a couple more minutes, Grace, if I can wait patiently. Here we go. Can you actually see the waiting room too, Ed, or you can't? I, I can. Oh, oh good. Okay. Oh, no, I can't see the waiting room. I see who's on. All right. Well, I'm so far, there hasn't been a pause. Uh, so we're at 47 people, about halfway to the registration number. All right. I like your backgrounds. I have to figure out how to spiffy up mine. <laughs> you have to have the right... Um, hardware and software on your machine to allow a virtual background. And Ed, you're going to do a little bit of an introduction explaining to people technically how things will work, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I won't do that. Um, okay, we're still having new people coming at 50. Hey, Len. I'll, I'll tell people who aren't in New York that I hear a big uh, seven, the end of the big seven o'clock cheering for our healthcare workers. And just a reminder to everyone, we ask you to stay on mute unless you're uh, invited to speak and you will have an opportunity to speak. Ed will explain sort of the protocol so we maintain uh, decorum here because we do have a lot of people coming in. So uh, again, we'll definitely start by 7.05, which is about two and a half minutes from now. It's just we still have people signing in, trickling in. And so I'm going to continue to uh, let everybody come in. OK. Part of why I want to wait is so that um, in the beginning I'll explain about muting and chatting and and all that. So I want to get the sort of the bulk of people to get to hear that in the beginning. Okay. Newcomers will just uh, miss it, um, but if they read my email carefully and they registered on time, then they'll know as well. Another minute and a half then to five minutes, 7.05. And we're close to six, 58 people. Here we go. Another person named Ed. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Ed, you can see the count? Or yeah. You, yeah, okay. So I, to, I, I won't keep repeating it then. That's fine. Yeah, I can't see the waiting room, but I can see how many are on. Okay. Well, we're going to start in one minute, but I'll also tell those people that are on. Um, 
that you can chat and the the best way to uh if you'd like to say something that's short um chatting it to everybody is a is a good way because you're going to be on mute and alan can unmute you but that will take a little bit of time and with 90 people that will eat up a lot of time well, there's a chat right so we'd ask you to just keep it to memories of david and uh, if you do have something more significant that you want to add just indicate in the uh, chat that you want to and i'll i'll ask it to pause or he'll he'll check it out as well as best okay can. so it's 705 so we'll, we'll okay hello everyone and welcome to remembering david schlichting i'm alan friedman president of the fibro bike club and ride director for escape new york the fall classic ride of the new york cycle club okay this is hang on just a second if everybody could please stay muted until um you're speaking because we now have uh so i'm going to mute everybody and i'm going to unmute you ed momentarily we got a few more people coming in so <laughs> there we go we, we had it happen right away um so i met david early in 2018 at a new york cycle club ice cream social i overheard him talking about cycling the alps and shared with him my fear and limited experience with downhills he was so generous in sharing his experience and gave me the techniques that would help me on upcoming rides i did in israel Two weeks ago, Ed Sobin was sharing his ride across America in 2018 with the Fibro Bike Club. Uh, and a picture that you'll see tonight of David meeting him in Kansas appeared. After that Zoom session, we spoke and were lamenting that a memorial ride that had been planned by Bike New York, New York Cycle Club, and Fibro Bike Club would not happen. And the idea for this gathering was born of that, and here we are. Ed Sobin and Len Diamond go back to the first bike tour, uh, the first Fibro Bike Tour with David. So it's fitting that we gather today, the first Sunday in May, when the tour would traditionally be held. But alas, we know it's not happening today. So I'm going to hand it over to Ed Sobin, who's going to take us through the evening. And I will be monitoring. If people do want to make comments, just ask and we'll, we'll make room for you here too. So Ed, you want to talk a little bit more about the process tonight? Yes, thanks. So so thanks everybody for, for joining us and registering. There's over 90 people registered so it's a lot of people which means we have to keep everybody on mute um, and if you'd like to say something um, chat and Alan will be watching the chat and he can unmute you and as well that I'm gonna have um, nine or ten sections of photos so I have lots of photos that I'll be sharing a lot of people have sent me photos I too many to to name them all, but thank you all for sending me your pictures. Um, and I've grouped them kind of by uh, topic, I guess, and I'll stop at the end of each uh, section and let people who are involved in David's life in that section give them an opportunity to say something. Um, so kind of, uh, you know, look forward to your to your time coming. I'll, I'll tell you what it is now, what the order is. Um, so it's, it's young David and his parents in Dodge City, then Dodge City High School and college friends. Um, David and his wife, Lisa, and their friends in New York, Leslie and Fred, Jill and Shlomo, um, cousin Elaine and her brother Ralph and Elaine's family and the Colorado cousins and a few people, so Elaine, has uh, has sent in a, a video. Lisa has a video. Um, Jill has a video. So I'll be I'll be showing those kind of in the middle of the slides. But still, in addition, people will want to talk just live, and that's fine. Um, if somebody, you know, one, once I do that, if somebody says something that you agree with, um, as in David's a great guy and he helped me, um, if if all you're planning is saying that, it's better if you don't um, ask Alan to unmute you to say that, but just chat that out to everybody and everybody can see what you chat and that'll be nice. And having the crosstalk behind me is, is just fine. Um, we're recording this, by the way, also. So people will see your, your comments later, people who couldn't make it potentially. Um, so, so chatting is good. Um, 
then I have a, a couple of pictures of a 1980 bike tour that David and Len organized. That was David's first big organized bike tour that he was kind of in charge of. Um, and there's David's volunteer life with New York Cycle Club, Bike New York, Five Borough Bike Tour, and Five BBC. So there'll be a lot of people on that. Um, so I'll stop after those pictures and let people talk who are in that group. Um, then there's a couple of trips that David ran to the Alps. So it's just fun to see for people who know that David rode his bike. Not everybody has seen his photos. So this is a few, uh, some pictures to get you a feel of, uh, of why David loved bicycling so much. And there's the work people. So there's David with some airplanes and at his desk in the office and with at various events with people he works with. Um, then a, a little quick uh, people that visited David and Dodge City. Um, a few photos of that. And then at the end is just some trips I did with David uh, to New Mexico, a few week or two long trips, three of them from uh, like 2012 to 17. Um, and then at the end, if, uh, if people still have something to say, we'll open it up to everybody and let people uh, say what they want to say you know, in Dodge City is in Kansas, right? We had a question. Yeah, Dodge okay. City is in Kansas. I thought yeah. so, just being sure. <laughs> Let's go. Let me go back to the front. So this is uh, seven week old David with his mom. <laughs> so those of you who are relatives will, will you know, remember these old days possibly, and, and those who knew David as this huge figure on a big bicycle, it's kind of funny to see him small. These are his parents. Check out these, the cars in the back there. I'm guessing those were new in this, at this time. David's father was selling cars, so I'm sure he always had a, a late model car. Here's a, he's, he's, here's David growing up a bit more. Still would be hard to recognize him. And this is the first one where I would really have recognized him. And here's the, uh, the high school graduation in the living room at, at home with his parents. And in the suit instead of cap and gown. And this, I believe, is that high school graduation picture. So now it's really looking like David. This is his uh, community, his Dodge City Community College days. This is David standing here in the middle with arms folded in his classic style. But that, that's a very David pose there. And this is the, the thinker pose, very intellectual looking. So for the Dodge City group, this, this should be a fun photo. I was enjoying this. I, he took me on a tour of the campus when I was there with him, and that was actually really interesting to me. And this, I'm guessing, this is the, uh, the college graduation. And this is a few years later with his parents outside of his house. He's, he's growing up. And this is just a nice, a nice picture of his parents. At, out on the lawn. And this was on uh, Mother's Day when David flew out to go see her. So anybody, um, so I'll start out with this. Does anybody give Alan his first hard job? Um, if people want to chat that you'd like to say something. Anybody from that high school family or, or Dodge City Community College? feel like they'd like to say something at this point? No one's chiming in yet. Good. Okay. And there will be time at the end, so. Yeah. This is, this is a picture from the, one of the reunion, a high school reunion. So David went back to Dodge City for high school reunions. He, he really loved Kansas and Dodge City and he loved going back and, and seeing old friends and seeing his family there. 
and this is Becky, who is another high school Dodge City friend who lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico now. When David and I would do our New Mexico bike tours, we'd always get at least one visit with Becky, either beginning or end, usually both. And that was always really fun. So this is now this is David's wife, Lisa, and David quite a while ago, obviously. I'm getting a, a little more a little more recent, but and let me play this video. In 2018, David surprised me with tickets to Springsteen on Broadway. This would have been a wonderful gift under any circumstances, but when you take into consideration that David did not like Springsteen, he was more of a John Denver fan, and he did not like Broadway as he simply did not fit into the seats. This type of loving gesture shows you what kind of a selfless and truly loving husband David was. Oh, I have to get unmuted. You got muted, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't meet you. Carry so, on. And so this is the, uh, was the quality of that video okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we heard it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everyone's nodding. Thank yep. you. Um, so, the, and here is the playbill, the Springsteen on Broadway playbill. And that really was a typical, David would pretty, you know, was just a great guy and did all kinds of wonderful things for people. How long were they married is a question. Um, pretty much about from right around when the Five Borough Bike Tour started around 1977. As, as I remember it, Lisa could confirm that. But. And this is, this is Hawaii. And, and these are, so they have two great friends, um, Jill and, and Shlomo and Lisa and Fred, and um, that's their kind of Long Island friends who have been really helping Lisa out in these past times since David was killed. So thanks to them. And Jill had a, has also recorded a video, which is good because it's, it could be very hard to speak once you're, uh, it's very emotional. So I think recording was the way to go. Hi, I'm Jill. I've been friends with Lisa and David for over 25 years. And about 10 years ago, I decided that I wanted to be a bike rider. After a few spins with an old bike that was in our shed, I contacted David about buying a bike and getting serious. He couldn't have been more excited. He researched, he took me for the purchase and the fitting and everything that could have been. And then once I got the bike, David and I went out a few times so he could teach me how to be a rider. Um, I'll never forget that time that we spent together. And even though it didn't stick for me to be a bike rider, I'll always remember his patience and passion and I will keep that with me forever. We miss you. Thanks. Yeah, so that, that was really nice. Um, does, does Leslie, Fred, Jill, Shlomo, Lisa want to say anything or type anything in that we, uh, that we should hear? That was really nice. So, so now we're moving into uh, Colorado cousins here. Uh, I think Leslie Mintz wants to say something. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, unmute Leslie. Leslie? Leslie? Yes. You wanted to say something? We did. This is Leslie and Fred. So um, David and Lisa have been a cherished member of our family for as long as we can remember. From our early days in Great Neck, when David taught our sons to ride their bikes, 
through our years in Manhattan where we all shared holiday dinners, we will always remember David's infectious laugh, his intelligence, kindness, warmth, and his love for wine, brisket, and Brooklyn blackout cake. (laughs) We miss you, David. We will always have the fondest memories. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, yeah, so, so Alan had that story about David helping him with bicycling and Jill as well. And so other people um, have said the same. And he was just, he was helpful with bicycling, but he was helpful with, with really anything he could help you with. He was helpful. Um, that was just the, the that was him. Um, So here's the the nice wedding with the cousins, and this is um, Elaine's daughter. David and I were stuck in, um, we had been on bike tour in New Mexico for 10 days, and we were supposed to come back on the day that Hurricane Sandy hit. So we flew from from Albuquerque back to, uh, to Denver, but all flights into New York were canceled for quite a while, so David got to visit. Elaine's family and I visited my nephew who lived in uh, in Frisco outside of Denver. So we had a vacation on top of a vacation while the New York was suffering through Sandy. We were in the high dry Rockies. And this is not from that trip, but there's Elaine bicycling. David and Elaine did a bunch of bicycling together. Not as much as they either one would have liked, but they did get to ride together. And this is Elaine's, um, cousin Elaine's nice uh, video. These are the words I shared at David's funeral. I am cousin Elaine. David's mother, Florence, and my father, Charles, were brother and sister. David and I were family to each other, but oh, so, so much more. We were dear friends. I grew up in Denver, David in Kansas. Our grandparents were wheat farmers in Kansas with some head of cattle. During the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl of Kansas, Grandpa lost everything. My father spoke about sitting in the church next to his sister Florence and just watching the dust roll off of the windowsills in waves. The government of Colorado was offering homestead land to destitute farmers. So my grandfather took the chance to set up a new life, move into Colorado, leaving everything behind. My aunt Florence was old enough to stay back and soon to be married to David's father. These are David's roots. They're always part of him no longer how long he lived on Long Island. David was my big cousin. He was 10 years older, the one I looked up to. It is David who taught me how to drive. And I used some of those exact same lessons with my daughters when they were learning. I was still a kid when I heard the news that rocked the family. Cousin David moved to New York, the furthest place away that any of us could imagine. He was basically moving to an entirely different country. From Kansas, it was like such a risky adventure. We, who know David as so predictable, the David who has used the same handlebar bag he bought for his first bike in the 70s, David who ate macaroni and cheese before every ride, and David who only ate vanilla ice cream no matter how many nut-free choices there were. David took this great adventure. How risky of him. So there are more news to rock the family. David was in love. I mean, he was really in love. Her name was Lisa. We remember David's love for cycling. I shared that passion with him. 
I have vivid memories 40 years ago when he brought the New York Bike Club out to Colorado, staying in our home and taking my little brother with them while they rode across Trail Ridge Road, the highest paved road in the world. Over the decades, I've ridden hundreds of miles with David. And with him, there was no end to shop talk. He helped me purchase every bike I have ever owned. We all knew David loved cycling. But what he really loved was Lisa. It was Lisa he thought about and talked about while cycling all those miles. The love of his life, the only love he'd ever had. 40 plus years of marriage. David was utterly devoted to Lisa. His love and his respect and his gratitude for her stronger every passing year. I've never seen a more harmonious relationship than theirs. David and Lisa fit together. It was like hand in glove. They belonged together. David loved Lisa. He loved so many others. David loved his family, his parents, and us cousins. He loved my daughters tenderly. And David loved his friends. We were all gifted by his loyalty and generosity. David loved God. He was a devout Catholic and his faith was central to him. My last memory of him when he flew out to Denver to visit our cousin who was ill was attending mass with him. He came with our family. He was so very pleased to be there with us. In this house of God at St. Louis of Great Neck, New York, David was at home. Here's a postscript, an afterword. Soon after David's funeral, I had so much more to say. I knew David and I were close, but now I realize that he touched every area of my life. We could and we would talk about anything and everything. David was such a wonderful listener. He showed as much interest in the things he knew nothing about, like parenting four teenage daughters as I was, as he did his favorite subjects. I always felt so likable, interesting, and funny when I was with David. Well, I've since learned that I'm not as special as I thought I was. He made everyone feel this way. We miss you, David. So it is. Thank you. Um, so if anybody um, from from that sort of uh, Elaine's family, Colorado branch there would like to say something, this is a good time. I will just make one comment as, as Elaine mentioned about how uh, Lisa and David were just such a harmonious match. It, it always surprised me when I was away with David um, for a week or so, like seven or eight times, I went on trips with him over all these years, um, a lot of different trips. And even these last three or four trips in the last uh, kind of seven or eight years, he would, any night that it was possible to call home, he would call home and he was actually really like excited and happy to be calling home and was like looking forward to to like being able to get to a phone and being able to talk to Lisa for a little bit in the evening. So it was always very, very uh, sweet and not what most, uh, most guys, even if they feel like that, would kind of act like they don't really want to do it. But David really was, uh, was really looking forward to it and happy with that. So no comments? That Elaine did cover quite a bit in that. If you'd like us to unmute, you just make a little notation in the chat and I'll activate you. But at this time, I, uh, 
Ralph Burns says David was certainly patient with him as a young teenager pushing his bike up the rocky passes. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Ralph. So, so these, so we have two pictures here. So this is, uh, there's David here. And what is he doing? Of course, he was working on somebody's bike. Um, and, and there's Elaine. Are you in that picture yet, or no? Yes. So there's, I thought that was you. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's that's Len Diamond up there, and that's and that's Lisa turning around looking at us. And I believe that's Ralph back there. But of course, David is doing bike work. Lynn's asking if that's our Colorado trip. Yes. The answer is yes. Okay. That, that is Colorado, 1980. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that was so typical of David. So Len still has the, the write-up sheet. So this was David's first big, uh, you know, multi-day. It was like a 10-day trip to Colorado. And it was a bike club trip. We, we had been doing weekend trips, but it was uh, very uncommon to do a, a one week plus and fly bikes out on, on an airplane, but David, figured out all the logistics and where we would stay each night and where we would eat every meal and what the elevation change was, which in those days when you didn't have, you know, online apps that would tell you the mileage and the elevation, David just, you know, meticulously researched everything. So he knew all and had this detailed sheet that he handed out to everybody. So it was really pretty remarkable in 1980. So Ed, you have, uh, let me, uh activate Len and while I'm finding him on this growing list uh, in order to unmute him I'll just share with you that there's a question as to whether Paul Sullivan's in there and then yeah. Lynn, Lynn says this is Bill not Lynn question mark I don't follow that but that's another statement that we it's have Bill, Voite Bill Voitek is in this photo so this is Bill Voitek a YBBC leader from from that era and beyond Len you're in so it, it it was a big deal for the bike club to do a week long trip. They they didn't do it. We had to have meetings. We had to come in and have meetings to discuss it with them before we had permission to do it. And this, an aspect of David's personality that will be a, a repeat further on was how he meticulous he was in planning. When when you were doing a trip with David, there was nothing left to chance. He had it planned out just to the smallest detail. So I, somehow I have in my files, I dug out the, the, the file from the 1980 trip and I have a, a typewritten um, itinerary with every day talking about how much the, how much the uh, hostel or hotel was going to cost, how much the meal was going to cost and where we were going to eat and where we were going to stay and the mileage of the day. And then I have um, articles that he, he, he did, all, did research from the Great Neck Library the tour guide of the Old West, and I have uh, articles from um, magazines about other people who've done bike riding there. So he, he really did all the planning for that trip, and it was a great trip. Um, you know, I was I was eighteen, nineteen. It was an eye opener, but uh, it, was, it was a wonderful trip. It was a wonderful week. We got to meet Elaine and her ride with her brother and her, her parents. We're having people chime in, best trip ever. And I think that may be Bill Wojtek who's on under Lynn's iPad. So welcome, Bill. Uh, thank you for the comments, everybody. So Ed. So, so now we're moving on to, uh, to, to kind of the, the heart of how a lot of uh, the New York people know him. So this is, at Interbike, so he went every year to, to the bike show in, uh, usually in Las Vegas, I believe. And he Ed, was one, one last question that just came in, who else was on that Colorado trip? I don't know if you were Len or uh, from the, the crowd, I guess, or remember who else? It, it was me, Len, you know, David and Bill Wojtek and three or four other people who were not really around anymore. You know, people who were, Okay. Sort of typical of a trip like that, for, in effect, four leaders and four people who were not leaders. All right, carry on, sorry. Yeah. 
So this is so this is the bike show. Um, this is some of his uh, at New York Cycle Club is the other bike club. There's two big bicycle clubs. So Five Borough Bike Club and New York Cycle Club. So David, of course, was in both and volunteered for both. So here, I believe he's mixing up, uh, you know, Gatorade for for what for their big uh, Escape New York ride. And this is the 1977, the first Five Borough Bike Tour. So David, I think you can see the cursor, right? Yeah. David's, David's back there. This is me right next to him, and there's Len next to me. So this Three is Amigos. <laughs> Three Amigos in 1977, yes. And, and not to leave out Steve Bauman, who really was extremely instrumental in getting the whole thing started, because he was... To look at him there, you wouldn't know, but he wore a suit and carried an attache case, and that carried a lot of weight with the police during negotiations to get it started. Is that Maggie in the lower left? Someone no. pointed out. No, yeah. there's nobody else around. Oh, no, Maggie's in there. You may have missed her, but that's her, apparently. Wendy oh, that, had a... oh, it's possible. I didn't know her then, but she might have been a marshal. On Looks the... like her. Glenn and both Glenn and Susan noticed it. And the question is, who's the man in the shirt and tie? We have a question shaking hands. That I don't remember. <laughs> um, this, this guy, I believe, is Eric Prager, who was the Board of Ed person who helped get the city to agree to it. And this other guy, maybe he, uh, maybe he runs this. I think, I think Len, Len, uh, Len knows, so I'm unmuting him. I'm trying to. I think, Len, you have to unmute. There you go. Okay. And guess if the, the, the sponsor for the bike tour that year was that Nathan's, and that was the manager of the store. Right. That's what I thought. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, that's Eric Prager from the Board of Education shaking hands with him. And I mean, it's a bunch of, I mean, it's the old time AYH bike committee leaders there um, sprinkled among the people. But there was, that was the first bike tour, and there were 250 people riding, and there were two police cars, one in the front and one in the back. And people are pointing out Elliot Winnick next to Maggie yes. down in the bottom left, so. Okay, great. I have to yeah. ask Maggie if that really is her. I, I sort of see the resemblance, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and this, so this is now the 30th anniversary of the Five Borough Bike Tour. This is on the steps of City Hall. Mayor Bloomberg invited all the- Gracie Mansion. Yeah, Gracie Mansion. Yes, thank you. The other, that other place. And there's, there's Steve Bauman now looking older and, and me it, without a suit and Len behind me and David. And then uh, in the Steve Faust in the orange t-shirt was also an original. Um, that's the original t-shirt and that's his wife. Yes, it's, it's a Nathan's t-shirt. So he managed to keep it safe in a drawer and not wear it. <laughs> For 30 years. <laughs> yeah. so that's why he's wearing a t-shirt, aside from being iconoclastic anyway. So the, great. Yeah, so this, this is just a couple of more pictures in Gracie Mansion. It was really a, a great event and everybody was happy. And yes, there's Len and David. We're not letting come. Yeah. And this is the, uh, the bike expo where David would volunteer the, the, the uh, info table where people who were registered had all kinds of questions. So people who had, who had a lot of experience would do work the info table and, and help people out. And Dave was much better than I would be at answering. Uh, once, once after the Boston Marathon bombing, you saw the picture of him had bag, bicycle bags in front of him. You know, there'd be 400 people a day would ask you, can I bring this kind of bag? And he was patient with everybody. He didn't, he was, the 400th person would get the same smile and answer as the first person. Whereas I would at that point would have been angry, <laughs> would have been toast. He was really good at doing that. Yes. Yeah, so we, we, it turned out you couldn't, you had to bring only a very small bag and people were asking because they had read where it said you can't bring a backpack and it's like, what part of you can't bring a backpack <laughs> do you not understand? So Leonard and I both, had a hard time with that. David could just patiently, happily really explain to them, no, you can't bring a backpack. So, so here's, here's, this is 
this is a pre-ride, which uh, we used to do before the Five Borough. So there's me again, no mustache. And Jim Monahan, who also got to go on a few Alp trip and I think a New Mexico trip with David as well, and, and David. I think Jim's the person I overheard him talking to at that ice cream social. Uh, and that's, yep, yep. This is David's territory on the, on the Five Borough Bike Tour. There was just a comment on that last picture, by the way, that it was the 2007 Fibro Bike Tour pre-ride. Mm -hmm. Okay, that yeah. Right. yeah. That was from Maria. And Dave was, uh, like a lot of us old timers, he had had a lot of different positions in the bike tour. He and I used to be co-super captains of Manhattan South. I spent a lot of, I spent several tours with him standing outside uh, Central Park at the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, by the hotel. But uh, in the, he gravit eventually I got pushed into other things and he took over uh, Super Captain of Manhattan North. And that's what he, he did probably how, how many years? Yeah, many, a, a couple of decades, I would guess. So it was, it was the Bronx and Manhattan North he had. So he had, for those who don't know, he had, he's a Super Captain because cap captains have a marshal team under them. And as we got bigger, we didn't want the people in charge of the captains to be some kind of general or something because it was sounding too military. So we picked super captain to be a little silly because even though you needed the hierarchy, you didn't really need the rank. And there's, there's Len, you always knew where to find David on the tour at that point because he was in his territory and you knew where his spot was gonna be. And you knew to look for a yellow jacket. Yes, as, as always. And these are, this is Jim Monahan again. These are two of his captains in Brooklyn near the end of the ride, but somebody paused to take their picture. So, so this is, let me go back there. So this is a spot where uh, New York Cycle Club people first, let me say. So we have New York Cycle Club, Bike New York, and 5BBC. So does anybody from New York Cycle Club have something they'd like to say? Give a little chat and Alan will unmute you. Um, I just, uh, waiting for anyone to respond. Uh, Ken, is that a yes? Okay, great. I'm gonna hand the mic over to, we're very fortunate to have the CEO of Bike New York with us who knows him for many years as well, Ken. Yeah, well, I've known Dave for many years, but, um, you know, he's been a great super captain in Manhattan North. Um, I really got to know Dave because, as you mentioned earlier, he loved going to Interbike. And Bike New York always got free passes to Interbike, and if you didn't have free passes, it was expensive. So I was able to justify giving Dave, getting Dave free passes because he was a super captain. He was part of the Bike New York family. But it was really in Las Vegas that I got to know Dave. And we'd hang out there and I got to see um, really firsthand all the great things people have always said about Dave. He's warm, he's sensitive, he has a great sense of humor, and he's such a loyal person. And, um, you know, so it's those memories from Las Vegas. Um, every year we'd go and have drinks. And um, it was those memories that I really cherished about Dave. I also want to add that, um, you know, he, was, he did the Manhattan... Um, Manhattan Avenue, the uh, Madison Avenue Bridge, um, and no one else wanted that. That was like a tough, anytime you do a bridge, it's always tough. But he particularly had a, a, a fondness for the Bronx water stop. So we, re, we named it. We don't have a name for any of our rest stops or anything, but we named the um, water stop after Dave. So it's the Dave Schlichty Memorial Water Stop in the Bronx. And we're gonna keep it like that forever. Um, and it's going to be a permanent part of the fib fiber or bike tour. And, um, you know, if we go deeper into the Bronx, hopefully one day, and we could do something bigger, like a rest stop, assuming that's what people want, we could do that as well. But we're, um, we're going to keep the water stop um, named after Dave. And um, I just want to thank everyone for organizing this. Uh, we were planning a big rally, a big, loud, noisy, nasty rally to get attention. Um, for the fact that, and I don't know if I should bring this up, for the fact that um, the Nassau County DA has been silent on, um, on Dave's killing and hasn't prosecuted his, the killer, who we know, he stepped forward. So I hope that when we can, 
um, we'll all still come together and have that rally that we talked about and, uh, and a ride um, for Dave. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. If anybody else would like to comment from any of the other clubs, um, this would be a time to just note so in the chat and I would, uh, um, I think that's, oh, uh, I think that's it. Yes, yeah, so like New York, New York Cycle Club. You know, Is that anyone here from Cycle Club? Well, you know, it's just interesting. I think when, when Len was saying that, um, I, I, I know from um, the work, you know, around Escape New York that he was involved with, he sort of like the consummate volunteer, right? That if somebody could come up, you get that question 400 times, who wouldn't come out of their head with it? And yet to realize that for that person, it's their first time and they really want to know an answer and they want to be treated nicely. So, um, it was nice to see him in that t-shirt and know that over many years he also contributed to all the mass rides that go on in this uh in this area so i'd, I'd carry on it because nobody else has uh put anything and, in there. and leonard did you have anything uh that you were going to say at this point let me uh unmute leonard i don't know why Len oh, there you go i I think I, I muted myself, and then once I do that, I can't unmute myself again. So I'll, okay. I'll, um, go ahead. I was just thinking before you moved on past that, there there are other things um, that we worked on with Dave. I mean, there were all those years, um, the Kodak Liberty rides. Um, there was a post. There was a series of rides for like it was post. Grape nut cereal that were different places, and Dave, you know, he worked on all, all of that. And then the, um, I guess, the signature event for the Five Board Bike Club for many years was the Montauk Century, and it, 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 um, and it, it it had gone on for since the early '60s, if not the late '50s, and we'd come on to a time, and either you or John Kalish will remember. I, I'm just terrible with with remembering dates. Um, I guess in the early 80s, the um, Long Island Railroad scrapped all of the um, old cars, so they got rid of the bar cars and the, uh, and the one baggage car they had, which is what we used to bring the bikes back on. And we were trying to figure out how to go forward with the, with the century. And we had a meeting, and it was at Lisa and David's apartment. And I know that Henry Chin was there, I was there, John Kalish, Paul Sullivan, I think you were. And we basically, with David, and, and we sat down and we came up with a plan for how to keep the Montauk going with buses and, uh, and, and rental trucks, which was horrible to run, but it kept the bike ride going for a while longer. So, uh, but he was, you know, involved in so many aspects of... Um, of so we have a comment that he really knew how to pack bikes in the cargo hold of buses as well, which is something that has passed down to uh, our club. We do these Montreal rides and uh, we've learned how to do that as well. I also want to make sure one Ken to another. So Ken Coughlin to Ken Podzaba, the request that when, when the rally happens, let us know. And I'll make sure that everyone on this, we had a 93 people sign up for this event, right? I'll go back. And I'm sure it'll be shared widely and I'll make sure we share it with everyone who's here, the information about the rally. So thanks for pointing that out. Oh, um, just one other thing, the Montauk mm -hmm. story, actually, since Bill Wojtek is here. First time I ever rode on a tandem was Bill talking me into it, doing Montauk on it. And the only person that could keep up with us, he drafted us the, almost the entire way, was David. He was the only person strong enough. It was a, it was a great year. I, have, I mean, that was a, it was a great ride. I just have Thinking about doing that with Bill and David is it's really nice. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, there was a suggestion that while we're waiting for conditions to improve for rallies, uh, perhaps we could do a letter writing campaign to the NASA DA. And that's certainly something which if, uh, if the uh, if Bike New York decided to do something like that, I could certainly put it to both bike clubs that I'm a part of on the boards of both. Um, so something to think about there, Ken, if it makes sense, just let us know. 
I, I know there might be some sensitivities, but I think it's a, uh, he, Ken says absolutely, so great. <laughs> All right, thanks for the suggestion and let's carry on, Ed. So, yeah, one personal note of, of so month, a century for those who are not cyclists, that's a hundred mile bicycle ride. So the, and I believe the last time I did a hundred mile bicycle ride was the Montauk century riding behind David, who is a very big uh, person to draft. So it was very helpful. Um, and that was, but that was more than 20 years ago. But it was, that was the wonderful riding with him, of course, was always wonderful. Uh -huh. So Ed, while you were reminiscing, uh, Mark Bron Bornfield posted that that's him and Paul Sullivan with Dave. Yes, exactly. So, so this is now one of the, uh, David organized two, two big trips to the Alps in the, in the late 80s. Um, this was so 1990. Might be 1990. Um, so the first one was just me, David, and Paul Sullivan there, who's bending down working on whatever he has down there, the three of us. And then a couple of years later, he did this bigger one with a bunch of people. So this is us in the airport, probably in Zurich, um, unpacking the, the bikes that were in these boxes. And this was the David wow. of that era with the yellow handlebar bag and, of course, yellow Kirtland panniers. And white bicycle. And of course, yes, and white bicycle, one of many. It was Geneva, Mark points out. Ah, the second one was Geneva, yes. The first time we went with Paul, it was Zurich, and, and the second time was Geneva. So this is the Gavia, which, was a, which is one of many sort of famous Alpine passes. Um, and we rode up this, and it was wow. it was dirt and had construction on it, but we, you know, just... Uh, David had to go up the Gavia and Paul Sullivan and I were like, yeah, we'll, we'll try that if you think it's so doable. So we, we did ride over the Gavia on dirt. This is a typical Alpine view. David took off his helmet to probably to cool off. Here, this is a, this is a good switchback uh, so we started probably down in this valley and you can see this road here going along and it just switched back. Um, it switched back a lot to get to there and it switched back and even more to get to where we are. So when you're going up, you're going up and when you're going down, you're going down. <sighs> this is a, uh, often when you got to the top, you really didn't get a view, so. This is, uh, for those who don't speak French, that's the High Alps, Les Hautes Alps, so. So this is the group that was with him on that, on that second trip. Um, and David's not in the picture. This is one of the few pictures I included without David. Of course, David's taking the picture, but just to kind of show you all the happiness he was giving people. And he did a huge amount of work to organize this. He was leading it. Mm -hmm. um, not for money or not even for a free trip. He just did it because he's a nice guy um, and he likes people. So it was a lot of work and he made a lot of people happy. He, he took, I think, three trips over there before this, before we did the trip to go and look at, he not only, he went, he wanted to see the hotels before he booked them and see the routes. So he went over there, rented a car and would drive around and check the hotels out and make sure the food was good. Yes. So um, we really scouted. He even knew every restaurant. Yeah, he scouted in in Switzerland, you know, and uh, France, and you know. So, uh, so uh, what did he have against dentists? We want to know, Len. At least Mark Mark points out the fact that he always put the dentists at the back, or at least oh. the inspector. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys in the back of the picture. We're both dentists. Actually, uh, someone made a comment that almost everyone in the picture is on the call except for Marion and Paul. Yes. Right. Well, if Paul Marion lives far yeah. away and Paul passed away a while ago. So, hey, Ed. Yeah. I have the, I have the itinerary and I have the write-up that Dave did for us 
before, to let us when he was trying to let us know what the tour is going to be like. So just let me read a paragraph out of this. Sure. It's very David like. There's a, there's a long paragraph first talk, talking about what every day will be like. Uh, you wake up in the morning, breakfast, a long ride up to the top, and then a quick descent back down. But this here. Make no mistake, though, this is a bike tour, all capital and underlined. No VBT style ambling through flat valleys. This tour seeks the high passes and conquers them and does not stop to research the local butterflies. We stop, yes, but to support ourselves in the form of food, water, and rest. Very little English is spoken in these out of the way places. So don't be surprised if you don't come away with a greater understanding of the world and its people. Yes, this is a bike tour, one of the most spectacular rides you'll ever do on famous roads upon which the Tour de France has been won and lost. Sagamore Hill will be a joke after this tour. In fact, any mountain on the East Coast will seem a bump in the road, as we'll climb more in some days than many East Coast mountains are above sea level. Yes, I, me I kind of remember that as you read it. So speaking of that, this is Alp d'Huez, which is a, a classic Tour de France um, stage. And it's a, it's a big climb. I guess this is the meters. It's probably, that's the bottom and that's the top, um, which is a lot of climbing. And of course, everybody had to do it with panniers on loaded bikes. So we did not do it as quickly as they do it in the Tour de France, but we did all make it up. So Perry writes in, what a great day, ride to the top of the Alpe d'Huez and then fly down 20 plus switchbacks. Wow. Yes. The ski resort at the top and you start at the bottom of it, we hit this intersection and there's a sign with two arrows, one is Alpe d'Huez and one is for something else. And you start going up and the switchbacks are numbered and you keep going up and up. And every time you came out to the, switch, to the outside, you'd look down and you weren't any further away from that intersection than before, you were just higher. <laughs> and and the, the intersections were numbered and we knew how many they were, so you knew how much more pain there was gonna be. And and then every once in a while, there'd be like a memorial at one of the, for some local bicyclist who must have keeled over on that part of the ride. But it was it was spectacular because it's such, for the non-bikers, it's like the, it's the penultimate stage in Tour de France usually, I mean, it's a very famous road. And, and when we got up to the top, just like in a lot of days, um, people used to paint the names of their favorite bicyclists who were competing. And those were there and the finish line was there. So it was really very exciting. So, so this is not Alpe d'Huez, but this is what a typical climb is looking like. I think I, the reason I'm in front of David is he was back paying the hotel bill. So I got left ahead of him. So I got to take a picture of him coming uphill. So there's a, a few more alpine scenery pictures. This is a descent. David was a, a master descender. He would occasionally pass cars on the descent. So a lot of these are, if, if you watch Tour de France's, you know, these are famous passes that they go over. So this is another group shot. And we're probably headed way down to that valley there in the bottom right. And back here, this is a gallery, which is a tunnel with one side open. So there'd be places where you'd go into this pretty much tunnel and you had to have your front and rear lights on because it's dark. And they build those because of rock av avalanches and snow avalanches both. Some more descending with the snow mountains behind. Not much traffic typically because cars that really have some place to go don't go on the roads we were going on because it's a slow go in a car. Oops, I want to lose an actual picture of a town, which. And then some of them stopped off in, uh, in guess where afterwards while they were in France. I think, I believe I had to go home, unfortunately. I think it was just John and David and myself. We took the, uh, the 
the um, trip ended in um, um, what was the name? Um, yeah, where the Olympics were. Yeah, Grenoble. Grenoble. And we took the TGV. We took the bullet train from there up to Paris. This is a funny car that David is bigger than. <laughs> yeah. And, and then we figured we'd get him a job while we was there at McDonald's. Yeah, I like the Arc de Triomphe in the back. And this is just a couple of, this is a picture of a Provence trip I did with David in uh, maybe 10 years after that. We, was, we were still getting to go on some trips together to, to Europe. These, these are the, and there's a few silly pictures. So this is the, the Hotel Hollenbad. It turns out, I think Hollenbad means uh, pool or something, but. And we had the traditional biker tans. Yeah. So in the hot tub, this is the silly picture of David laying in bed <laughs> with the good biker tan. I was, that was one of my things. I always did that. And this is for people who say, like, where do you keep your bikes when you go on these trips? So there's David's bike and there's my bike. Either the bikes lean on the bed or the bikes lean on the wall if the room is big enough for the bikes to lean on the wall and there's no footboard. Or if you're staying at the Marriott, as we often did, there's room at the back of the room to put the both bikes. That's where the bikes live. So, so let me just head back there and is anyone from the... Uh, from those Swiss trips? Well, actually, someone made a comment that Len is doing his Freddie Mercury imitation. I didn't know. I do not have his overbite. <laughs> <laughs> but can you, can you pump out one of his tunes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, just a look. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Um, so anybody from those trips uh, feel like they need to make a comment? Anybody oh, want to chime so in? Wonderful. Make people have been commenting, I think, in the chat. But if you'd like to, uh, no, I mean, if, no comments. As yeah, long yeah. As, yeah, okay. If you'd like to come off of mute, just put a quick note in in the group chat anytime. Just say, "Take me off mute and let me speak." So at the moment, Ed, I think people are feeling like you're uh, you're doing a great job. In fact, I've had a few people who had to drop off a bit early, make some comments to that effect. So thank oh, you. Thanks. Yep. So now, now we're up to the David's other love, though much more expensive. He would have loved to have one of these things behind him. A Canadian Bombardier jet. Well, <laughs> any homeland. jet. But <laughs> he wasn't picky. I think any jet would have done. Um, this is him inside the jet. He worked for the for the airlines for when he first moved to New York, he was not in the industry, but he, he quickly got into that. And that was really like the place for him, for sure. He loved everything about planes and air travel. Um, and he loved airlines and he loved the airlines he worked for pretty much. Um, Perry makes a comment that the two years that uh, they participated in were planned with the utmost detail and always wonderful experiences. Yeah. So he got to go, this is the Paris Air Show where he went, um, I believe with some, with his cousin and he's gone with a few people to the Paris Air Show and he loved doing that too. So he'd go to Interbike because he loved bikes, but he went to the Paris Air Show too because he loved that pretty much just as much. It's just, it's a harder hobby to just roll out of your house into your plane. <laughs> At least a great When we came back from the, uh, the Alps trip, it was on a 747 and it was a, it was, it wasn't Swiss Air, but it was their, it was their, um, it was a subsidiary. And he, he talked us into the cockpit when we were over a green, I think over Greenland or something. I'd never been in the cockpit of an airplane flying like that. It was amazing. Wow. Yeah. Pre 9-11, pre obviously. <laughs> um, Maria makes the comment that we all can remember his greeting at work. Swiss, this is David. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, whenever I'd see airplanes go by, I used to take pictures of them, cell phone, once cell phones came around. I, I, I'd take a picture, text it to him, say, hey, David, what kind of airplane is it? And he always do. So this is a more Paris air show, I assume. And then this is, there's a few uh, pictures here with his work colleagues who, who he 
really liked that he was not working a few years ago for maybe a year. And for the first few weeks, he was worried about missing the paycheck, but it quickly became clear that it wasn't really the money. He, he loved his work and he loved the people he was working with and he was just really missing them. So it was great when he kind of got to go back um, to pretty much this, you know, same job and, and get to do that, so. By the way, every time that I said someone named Maria made a comment, it was actually Steve Taylor. Welcome, Steve. Ah. <laughs> All right. That makes more sense, yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so carry on. Uh, uh, yeah, so here's David at his desk being, being happy. <laughs> and some, uh, a few work, work events, people from, from that he worked with sent me some pictures. So they'll be sort of, uh, can fondly remember these, these nice times with David. Let's back to you, yeah. It looks like a Christmas party. What did he do for the airline? I think he was in IT, one, no? I'll let one of them give a better description. My, my weak description is it was kind of pricing of, of group sales and business and first class and just knowing the ins and outs of all kinds of price structures and offers and odd little niche things. You know, it was not what the coach price should be. It was much more complicated uh, than that. This is Puerto Rico, I believe, on, the, on some work, uh, work trip they went on, but he, they got to go to the beach briefly. And I'll stop here and let anybody from, that he's worked with to uh, say anything if they would like. Any colleagues want to chime in? Just type your name in the group chat and I will... This is a really good friend of his at work that he, you know, he was always happy to, to be with. Well, no one's piping up, so. Okay, good. And then he, here's a little Dodge City uh, sort of memorabilia. So this is where David was born and grew up. This is the post office in Dodge City. Ready. This is historic. Dodge City, like as in Gunsmoke, they preserved a bunch of the buildings and they charge you a few bucks to get in. And they have a uh, gunfight at noon, I guess. And interestingly, the gunfight is about this sign, about the carrying of firearms strictly prohibited. But the people who get in the gunfight don't want to give up their guns and the marshal and whoever like shoot it out with them. And this the, is this the trip from uh, 2018 then? So there's two trips. I did a, I broke my, uh, my femur and my wrist in 2016 and I drove my car across country. And David, typical of him, said, oh, well, I'll, how about if I meet you in Kansas City and I'll drive you across Kansas and we can stop off in Dodge City for a few days and then you can let me off in Denver and I'll visit my cousins and then I'll fly home from there. So in 2016, so this is 2016, um, when he met me and drove me across Kansas, so I didn't, you know, so I got a break from driving across the country and I got to see Dodge City for the first time. We have, uh, we have a comment here on the earlier, building on what you had said about his pricing ability. So this is Ruth. David was a genius. He knew everything about Swiss Air, Swiss Lufthansa pricing. I could take data and analyze it comprehensively. He knew the competition inside out. He was a really valuable asset and much respected friend and colleague with a heart of gold. Yes, thanks. Thank you. It was, it was, a, it was an interesting, odd little thing, but he, he really, he knew everything about what everybody was doing. It was, it was that attention to detail you know, thoroughness that we were talking about with the trip planning, that was the same thing he did at work. If you 
gave him something to, you know, if there was a way to figure out what was going on, he could figure it out. Um, so he was great at that and he loved, and he loved doing it too. And also, do you remember for years um, when he was, when his office was down at Kennedy Airport, he used to commute. I mean, most of us ride bikes for fun, recreation and stuff. David commuted for years to Kennedy Airport by bicycle. Um, you know, he had a, he had a bicycle, he had a, for the cold weather, he had a fairing, he had like a, a fiberglass fairing on the front of the bicycle because it would keep his hands warmer. Um, even um, out on Long Island, the more recent office, he sometimes would commute by bicycle. Right out to Melville, yeah. So this, this, is, this is my car that he drove across Kansas for me, and this is, this is uh, Kansas. This is, it's kind of Western Kansas. All of Kansas is not quite this flat, but the Western part is. Um, that is cool. And, and this is a picture that Jim first sent. This is a 1999 at David's father's house. Um, and he did bike across Kansas with David in 99. So he, Jim also got the, uh, the tour of Dodge City and, bef and before me, so that was good. And they, David just loved doing anything with, with any family member and he loved being in Dodge City and he loved being in Kansas. Did you bike ride while he was driving? I think not. You just took a break. No, on the driving was, one. Yes, on so for the driving one in 2016, you were I injured. Could just barely walk at that yeah. point because I was like, so I was walking with a cane still. So driving worked, but it was nice to have him drive the car for a while so I could kind of move around more. Um, in 2018, I bicycled cross country and I rode through Kansas, and David picked me up in Larnard. Um, and drove me to Dodge City for a few days rest and meeting various high school and, you know, relatives and friends and, uh, you know, getting to look at his, uh, you know, his high school and community college and all that kind of stuff. And then he drove me back to Lawnard and I continued my, uh, my first bike. Dodge City relative to Kansas City. Dodge City is kind of in the middle of Kansas and, and south, and Kansas City is right on the border with Missouri, so it's all the way in the east. And, and Jim had a great comment um, about the bike across Kansas that, that was, you know, as the people have been saying, the, the ride was amazing and so was David. Nice, a nice short, sums it all up. So, so now we're into to my little uh, section. So I did three um, New Mexico trips with David in the last bunch of years, like 2012 to 17, we would do a kind of 10 day New Mexico, various loops and David would plan out everything, every hotel, motel and meal um, and you know, elevation, distance, all all arranged. And this is a rare picture of David walking because we were in this interesting little town and we walked around for a block um, to sort of just get coffee and look at the historic houses here. I don't even remember where in New Mexico, but it was it was a day that wasn't too long, surprisingly. So we were able to take a little time. This is one of the few not mountain. Um, cause he, he kept his, uh, love of the mountains. So flat was flat bicycling was not really his thing. So this is a, this is a rare flat one for him. Typically it was much more like this. So we started out down there somewhere and this is up some thousand feet or more and more to go. This is the, the top of some pass or other, probably some eight, nine, 10,000 foot pass in New Mexico. And it's, it's, always, it's always either up or down. So here's an up and, and here's another top with it. Just a beautiful view. Um, we, each year we went, we would go at the end of um, 
October, so it wasn't too hot. I really don't like heat. And David doesn't really like it either. And I don't, the, at least the first time, and I don't think we were trying, but we were always managed to be in Taos when the balloon festival was there. So that, that was nice. It's the biggest one I think is Albuquerque, but they move up to Taos a few days later and there's a lot of balloons going up. You can see how much he has his helmet cover on and gloves. So we would start out not that long after dawn and at the end of October there, it's, it's kind of in the upper thirties, it's cold. And the scenery is beautiful. Um, you know, New Mexico is just beautiful biking, at least in October anyway. David's getting ready to take a picture, not to jump. He wanted to get over the fence to not have it be in the, in the shot. This, this is some, some of our eating places. So sometimes it's a little local place like this. Almost always it's a small local place like this. And occasionally we would find the subway and I could get chocolate chip cookies. David, when we were, when we were younger, David used to bake chocolate chip cookies all the time, um, especially for the five borough bike tour and Montauk. But yeah, anytime you requested, he would bake you wonderful chocolate chip cookies. But he finally stopped that as being uh, too decadent, I guess. Moved on to Cliff Bars. So this is just to kind of give you an idea of why did he always uh, want to take his take all this time and go off to uh, New Mexico and go biking. It's just really spectacularly beautiful. So it's you know this is a down 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 down. And if you see trees like this, it means you're at the very bottom of a hill because. That's the only, there's a river right behind those trees. That's the only place there's enough water. And then you go up more. This, this is the Rio Grande Gorge, another very beautiful section there. And this is the bridge over the gorge with a nice pullover so you can stop and look down, way down. Interesting and accurate comment relative to both your bikes and panniers that uh, that they've sure seen, they've been around, eh? And they've yes. <laughs> seen a lot of the world. <laughs> they have, yes, they have been on many airplanes and, and been done a lot of miles. And this is sort of a riding off into the sunset. Uh, this is a small kind of museum. It's a, David's father was a car, owned a car dealership, as I understand it. Um, and this, and David loved cars as, Le slightly less than bicycles and jets, but, but he loved them also. So this was a fun place for him and for me as well. And that's it. So this is, uh, that's the last picture. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say my, I mean, the only little bit I can add to what people have been saying is just what a great friend, you know, more than a bicycle friend, you know, as, each, my parents died, David was there and coming to the funeral and coming to the Shiva. And when I was injured, he was coming over to, to come visit me. And he, when he wasn't working, he'd come over for lunch just for a visit to spend time. And he was always happy to chat on the phone and visit and help and do whatever, you know, whatever he could, um, that he just, he just, kind of knew what to do. Um, so he was a great guy. So other, other people have any, uh, now that we're done with pictures, we can at random take anybody who'd like to say something. I'll, I'll go first, just for the, since I have, I'm unmuted anyway. Um, and, and I know his cousin said that he liked vanilla ice cream, but I always remember haagen mint chocolate chip for some reason being the, the, the ice cream of choice. Mm -hmm. um, he did get more adventurous. <laughs> I guess Lisa, Lisa was a bad influence on him. Um, and, and I was always amazed how he could do all these trips and everything, and Lisa was fine with it. It was, it was, it was a wonderful relationship. I mean, they just, it was fabulous. Um, sometimes I'd go over to his apartment, 
when I needed um needed some major bike work done, and you'd go over there to the Schlichting uh, workshop. Uh, workshop. <laughs> And, and just like everything, David was consistent. So we had his toolbox and the tools were laid out in a specific order and everything was there. And when like, if we, if we were reinstalling a headset or a bottom bracket, it was done a particular way. And then he had, he had a bottle of red nail polish and he would draw lines with the nail polish on the bike where the, where the adjustment was so that you'd know looking back, if the lines are lined up, it stayed the way we said it. And if it, if it loosened up or something, you could see it moved. So he had, he, like, he was, like, everything was done Precise. precisely. Um, and amazingly, all his tools, amazingly to me, all his tools were clean. It was like a computer technician. Every tool was pristine. And he was, he was a wonderful friend. He, he was happy to organize these trips for us and do all the work. Um, he just, he loved doing that. He um, riding with him, you know, spent spent hours every day riding, and it was always a, a joy. Um, and he was he was a man of um, routine. He had his routines, just like like Sunday mornings. He had a route that he wanted to do riding. Um, he was still, I, I guess, he was doing two to three thousand miles a year on the bike every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was. Yeah, what what happened was awful, um, but I, I was happy. I mean, I, I met him probably when I was sixteen or seventeen, something like that. So he's been around all my adult life. Uh, it, it was it was a privilege. Okay, we do have uh, Susan and John. Let me find. We have somebody who wants to speak. So let me uh, find them here. You are about to be unmuted. Susan and John, please go ahead. No, just John. Okay. <clears throat> I'd like to take a moment to talk about um, David, and not bicycling, not just just about David. Uh, I was really struck by that one photograph of him in the cockpit of the airplane because big David there looked like the little kid that he also was. He was just so happy to do that. He had there was such a range of personality in him that was wonderful. He, he could be big and imposing. He could be sweet and friendly. He, he was just kind of all those things to everybody. I first met him when I was learning to be a leader, a bike leader, and I was, I was very scared of him and I found him quite imposing. And then I found out Later on, he could give orders, and on the same token, he could take orders. He was a volunteer. He was happy to come and help people out. He was just uh, a deep, sweet, wonderful person. That's all. Thank you so much for adding that. And really, if folks have anything heartfelt like that to say, it, it just gives us uh, so much more perspective. Thank you. Anyone else want to chime in? Please just uh, speak up in the, uh, I think, I just want everyone to know that we are recording this and it will go into, uh, we have a YouTube channel for the Fibro Bicycle Club. And when we do uh, do this letter writing campaign that I think was an excellent idea, we'll have something maybe to, uh, if we do an email campaign as well, we can have a link to this that we share. So people who are deliberating understand what was taken from us. Um, uh, Steve makes a comment. Dave is very lucky to have friends like Len, Ed, and John. He especially shared his respect of Len and John and insights into how to deal with Len and John. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. A peacemaker as well, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to ignore them. <laughs> oh, here we go. Andrea. Andrea. He has someone who is easy to confide in. He was someone who was easy to confide in. Only saw him in the spring around uh, five EBC training rides and the five borough. We had talked about being co-super captains had the tour gone further into the Bronx. Well, hopefully that'll Let, happen next, next time. Let me throw in one little anecdote about it, just about David being just such a general nice guy. We were in, on the first uh, Alp trip where it was just me, David and Paul Sullivan, we were at a, some restaurant for dinner 
and David was just being his usual in Austria, and David was being his usual friendly self. And by the time we were kind of done with dinner, the waitress invited us to come back to her house to like meet her parents, <laughs> just because it was like interesting that there were some Americans in this small Alpine town and you know, off tourist season that rode bicycles and we walked over to her house when she got off and like had tea with her parents and talked to them. And it was just a nice, um, you know, a nice little local event, which was, which was fun. And it was just because David was just so kind of outgoing, but not in the kind of loud, maybe uh, American way, but a, a quieter, outgoing, friendly way that was, that was kind of his own invention, I feel like. Anybody else would like to speak before we wind down? I have one more bicycle related one from Julie Hyman to just um, relay that on, on that trip that we saw the photos of the, uh, she was calling it the David Schlichting um, washing technique. And I think he might've taught it to me as well. I forget when I learned it, but how every night you, you had to wash your, your clothes in the sink basically. And David had to lay, lay the towel out flat and put the bike clothes on it and you wrap the, the clothes in the towel. And in, in the later in, incarnation of it, at least he would step on it gently to squeeze the water into the towel and then you'd hang it up. And Julie did that for years afterwards and I still do that. Um, so, so that was, you know, another contribution that he, uh, that he gave to people. You, you edited that picture out. I sent you the one of, of the, of him doing that, yeah. but you could always, in the hotels, you could always tell what rooms we were in because you look at the front of the hotel and there'd be bike jerseys hanging out the windows. Right. So Liz Baum also shares that he would always meet us at Cunningham Park and always did the first half of a ride with us during the training season and then head home because <laughs> right. he came in from Long Island, right, I guess. Um, okay. Anybody else, please don't be shy. Oh, we're getting thanks, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, great, well, thank you all so much. Um, you know, it's, I think it means a lot to like everybody that there was a lot of people who were able to register and attend, you know, this memorial and it's hard just being remote. Um, you know, we, we, it would be nice if we could all like have some wine and sit and talk to each other and, and not eat nuts, but eat something and talk to each other, but you know, maybe that will happen sometime as well. So thank you everybody. All right, with that. <clears throat> well, wonderful, thank you, Ed. You're welcome, thanks. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thank you all for coming. I'm gonna unmute everyone in case you wanna all say thanks to Ed. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. So everyone stay strong and we'll try and bring you together when we can do the rally uh, in the flesh one day guys thank you good night everybody Cheers. thank you stay healthy goes up at suzanne <laughs>